Hello and welcome back. If you follow the channel, you know that we are reverse engineering an amazing military electromechanical computer, the Bendix MG1 Central Air Data Computer. We marveled at its mechanical complexity when we opened it up in part 1, and Master can explain how it works in part 2. If you have watched part 2, you now know that synchros play an extensive role in this computer. This episode will focus on this marvelous and famously expensive components. We will unbox some new old ones, explain how they work, play with them in the lab and show them in action in other vintage aircraft instruments, which we are planning to eventually hook up to our computer. Master Ken, you got some toys? Yes, I got a couple um, servos off eBay. All right. Our air data computer uses these weird Bendix servos and I found the exact same model so we can hook them up and see how they work and hopefully connect them to the air data computer. Oh, they're Bendix too. <laughs> they're like the very same part number, which was hard to find. So here, open one up. All right, so it's a cardboard box and inside that box is Special military packaging. A cardboard envelope that says fragile on it. See, it says fragile. Oh, and wait, wait, look at the other side of this, like. Oh. It's like. Method two packaged. Not just method one, we've got method two here. Packaged with desiccant, do not open until ready for use or inspection. Okay, let's see if I'm ready for this. And that fresh desiccant smell. Oh, that's not very fresh. <laughs> <laughs> you look desiccated. But well, that might be old, actually. How old is it? I don't know. Oh, we're not done yet, though. So <laughs> underneath this package is another bag. It's 1987. And inside the bag is some desiccant. Oh, a fancy little box. Oh, and one of those little cards. So is, blue, it's... is blue good or bad? Blue is good. Okay, I got my money's worth on the packaging alone. Oh, it's taped shut. Okay, well, we'll... we give you the tools. Okay. Uh, my breath seems to have no humidity. <laughs> oh, here it's we go. Because of your dry humor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cute. So oh, that's go. that's the same one that's inside. Yeah, indeed. Exactly the same. Y yes, it's like same part number, same everything. It's like authentic. And it comes with documentation. Oh, this is um, measurement specifications to prove that it's it's valid. Look, look, look at this. It's a strip chart showing how much error it has. Error in minutes. I don't have time for that. Plus or minus 30 minutes. So it's like right, little wiggles right near the center lines. Mm -hmm. These are like serious parts with like... Yeah, mill mil mil spec. They, they check like every everything has been stamped off. So what do these mil spec synchros do and how do they work? Let's start by hooking one up and showing you the final result. So Mr. Ken, you're going to demonstrate how synchros work, which is quite amazing. Yes, so I have two synchros here. Um, they're just wired, um, the outputs from one go to the other, um, three wires for um, three phase signal and then they each have um, 26 volts power. That's a cheap way to make an AC power supply, so that's 400 hertz uh, connected to my HP power amplifier that, that makes... Uh, how many volts does it need? So it needs um, 26 volts RMS, which is about 75 volts peak to peak. Yeah. So really it's you know, fairly substantial. And now the cool part is, when I turn one synchro, the other needle moves exactly to match. But it's bi-directional. I can also turn this one, and the first one moves. No electronics involved. J just, just the wires between them and the and the power supply. I love those things. And then you have the uh, the, the, the the signals that go through the three windings. So you can see the the three phases here. Pink is highest. Green is highest. And blue seems to be dead. Um, Oh, we have blue. Okay. So you can see the three phases. Pink is highest, blue is highest, green is highest. So when th they're in the same position, there's no current, so there's no torque on it. But if you move either one out of position, that creates torque that will move them to match. And you, if you hold one and push the other, you can, you can, you can feel, feel it. It's, it's pretty small, but you can feel it. All right. 
Synchros were you know, very popular in the 40s and 50s. The Navy would use them for transmitting signals all through the ship. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're used in aerospace such as here. It, it was a very convenient way of transmitting a rotation from one place to another. Right. What? What kind of witchcraft is going on here? We just made a bidirectional position transmission system with tactile feedback and no electronics at all. Looks like some alien technology from the future. But it's actually very old and still in use today. Synchros date back from the early 1900s, with one of their first use being for the control of the Panama Canal valves, if you believe Wikipedia. Inside, they are just little AC motors with three stator windings at 120 degrees of each other, and a single winding for the rotor. The rotor windings are connected to an AC power source with common frequencies being 50 or 60 Hz, 400 Hz or 1 kHz. For avionics, 400 Hz is prevalent, and that's what our computer uses. The three stator windings pick up the signal induced from the rotor, and the relative amount and polarity of the picked up signals depends on the position of the rotor. Conversely, the angular position of the rotor can be inferred from the ratio of signals coming from the three windings. Retrieving this position using modern electronic means is actually quite annoying. You need sampling ADCs and a microcontroller and some code. But retrieving said position with another synchro without any electronics is a piece of cake. Just connect the rotor of an identical synchro to the same AC power supply and then connect all the windings of the receiver to the windings of the transmitter. And the rotor of the receiver will assume and follow the position of the transmitter rotor automatically, thanks to the miracle of motor magnetics. It probably hasn't been lost on you that the scheme is completely symmetric, so you can also turn the receiver and watch the transmitter move, as we did in our experiment. In practice, transmitter windings are optimized to produce a high signal, while receivers are built to produce torque with some position damping, so they are not exactly the same. Note that there is another closely related cousin to the synchro, the resolver. We had encountered one recently in the Apollo CDU episode. It's similar to a synchro, except that it has two stator windings instead of three. The two windings are at 90 degrees of each other. They are much more friendly to electronic reading systems, since one gives you the sine and the other the cosine of the angle. Resolvers is what the Apollo guidance computer uses, or more exactly the CDU, to read the inertial platform position. But my favorite property of resolvers is that they make pretty circle figures on an analog scope. Coming back to synchros, the one downside of this simple transmitter-receiver arrangement is that the received torque is very small. The receiving synchro can only move something light, like a needle. To move anything heavier, you have to use a servo arrangement, where the receiving synchro is assisted by a servo motor and some amplifying electronics. This is what happens here in this more complicated altimeter indicator. We'll get to that in another episode, but for now, let's focus on the simple use of a directly connected synchro to move an instrument hand. So I've wired up a synchro to the, the mock computation part here in the middle. So it's this pair of uh, synchros, right? Right. Coarse and fine, I already see that one. And then those are wired to this connector on the front here, which I've then wired to this synchro here. So now if I mechanically turn this, since we don't have the whole system working yet, um, what you see is the output synchro turning to math. So basically I'm manually adjusting the Bach number as we speed up through the speed of sound. Wow, it went real fast. It works, but I wanted real aircraft instruments. So I went out on eBay in search for cheap vintage ones that would hopefully have a compatible synchro actuator in them. It's pretty hard to tell what will be inside, but it looks like I lucked out on the first one. It's a temperature indicator, a static air, so I hope to put it at the output of the temperature computer here. And inside is exactly what I wanted, so it's not 
an instrument pop proper it's a slave instrument so all it has is a synchro and it's the right 400 hertz 26 volts the right standard so it's just a synchro driving a needle and that is exactly what we need since the measurement is done by this part of the mechanical computer over here and that is my achievement of the day on the left my transmitter on the right my receiver an air temperature indicator and here you go and you, you can hear it singing a, an A at 400 Hz a very flat A Ooh, we're getting negative it's very cold and here's another marvel of engineering a Mac number indicator but this is a Mac number indicator and repeater so in itself it is a mechanical analog computer it computes the ratio of the pitot pressure that comes through here and pushes this thing down and acts as a super duper spring with this little tuning pressure thingies so that's the static pressure that's the pitot pressure to divide one with another and it rotates the shaft I explained this instrument in the previous video a very clever contraption indeed this one also has a repeater synchro connected to the hand which is a transmitter for another slave instrument not really what I want but I think I can use it in reverse as a receiver if I can't find a way to disconnect it from the mechanical actuation. And then there is a synchro that picks the position up and retransmits it to something. But I want it as an indicator only, so I slightly bend this thing up to disconnect it. And now this is free, and I think I will be able to use it as an indicator. So the Mach number would be calculated by the bigger computer and just displayed. I'll see if that works. And here's my second achievement of the day. That's uh, my modified Mac number indicator. Well, it goes the other way around. Except from that, 0.3 Mac, 0.4 Mac, 0.5, 0.6. And that's how I made the fastest flying bench ever. And also the coldest.